Human rights groups have condemned a video posted on the internet which appears to show Syrian rebels executing captured government soldiers. Amnesty International and the United Nations say that if the killings are confirmed, they constitute a war crime. Well, the BBC's Jim Muir reports from neighbouring Lebanon. He told me that even though the contents of the video have not been verified, it is likely to be genuine. It's clearly not the kind of video that you could fake. I mean, uh, you'd have to be very good actors to, to play those parts. Basically, um, it shows, as you say, a, a group, a very large group of gunmen, uh, obviously in a state of some excitement, uh, herding and pushing uh, something like a dozen, perhaps ten uh, army soldiers who've been captured in this uh, unfinished building that was presumably acting uh, as a kind of... Uh, uh, reserved for a checkpoint there, um, pushing, shoving, kicking them, forcing them to the ground, and eventually uh, opening fire. Um, you can see the, the, the building there is kind of unfinished building, the kind of uh, place where troops who are manning a checkpoint would be resting and sleeping and so on. Um, the uh, prisoners are, are kind of herded to the ground there, pushed and kicked and shouted at. Uh, and then the fighters uh, open fire and you can see, um, I don't know how much you're going to show of it, but you can see the bodies kind of twitching as the bullets are pumped into them. Um, a very ugly scenes. Uh, indeed, the kind of thing that has already drawn con condemnation from uh, international and local human rights groups, uh, reminiscent rather of some video that appeared a few months ago from Aleppo, where uh, a group of rebel fighters summarily executed um, some Shabiha, that's uh, the pro-government militia. Um, who they had captured um, and that similarly drew not just condemnation but it drew action from the rebels themselves because most groups then signed up to a, a kind of a pact of honor or um, agreed principles uh, which would ban this kind of behavior now the group that's being blamed or certainly uh, alleged that it is responsible for uh, the killings that you're seeing there is called al nusra front now that is a kind of extremist islamist group that has joined in um, on the ground uh, alongside the other uprising groups uh, and it is being blamed for this uh, particular set of killings. And Hillary Clinton, the US Secretary of State, has warned that these radical types of Islamist fighters are trying to hijack what's going on in Syria. What response has, has that drawn? Well, um, it has not gone down at all well by the opposition as a whole. Um, even the head of the, the Syrian National Council, the, the main uh, umbrella group, uh, basically said that uh, it's very unfair for the Americans and others to, to criticize um, the opposition for allowing uh, Islamist extremist fighters to, to join in the fray. They're saying these people have given us nothing, the outside world. Uh, they're very desperate to have, for example, shoulder-fired anti-aircraft uh, weapons with which they could defend themselves against the regime's unbridled use of uh, air power. Uh, but they have not been receiving arms or support, practical support, uh, from the West in that way. So Jim Muir reporting there. Let's get more now on our top story, the alleged execution of a group of Syrian government troops by rebels. Joining me now on the line from Beirut is Sami Haddad from the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Just first of all, what's your response to seeing this video? Well, video, uh, the footage shows uh, rebel fighters rounding up and uh, summarily uh, executing more than 20 Syrian regular soldiers. Uh, the rebels abused the victims physically and verbally before the massacre, kicking them repeatedly. Uh, this comes after rebel fighters take over the Hmesho checkpoint west of Sarafib town uh, in Idlib province. Um, uh, th this, is, this act is condemned by all international uh, laws and, and by, the, by the main principles of, of the Syrian people. Uh, this will not... Um, pave way for de democratization in, in, in Syria and, and will only uh, obstruct the process. Um, uh, well, for groups, not... sorry, sorry to interrupt, but for groups like yours which are opposed to the current regime, doesn't this make you know, opposition to the government very, very difficult? Because it shows that the rebels are acting in a way that the UN is saying is going to be seen as a war crime. Of course it's a war crime and, 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 and this is very dangerous for, for the country. Uh, if the opposition are, are using the same methods that the regime is using, then then we will, will we will not we are not fighting the, the the methods. We are only fighting the people, which means that the faces will change and names will change, but the methods of torture and killing and 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 um, detaining will will still be the same. 
Uh, who, do so you bla the, who do you blame for the fact that this sort of violence now has spread to the rebel groups? Do you believe it is Syrians who are responsible for this or outside groups who are responsible? What about those countries who are funding the rebels? Um, I, I think I'll hold the responsibility of, of, of where we have reached today because, because um, Syrians have been witnessing a lot of killing, which which makes them, uh, which makes a sort of a reaction towards the violence inflicted on them by the regime. Um, but um, uh, foreign countries um, also hold responsibility because they are the ones who are uh, supporting these groups uh, financially, uh, and um, uh, as well as the Syrian National Council, who was the first to. Um, who was the first to um, uh, support support the rebel groups in arming and or militarizing the revolution? Okay, uh, Sami, uh, so I'm sorry to interrupt. We're out of time, but thanks very much indeed for joining us there from Beirut.